Hello YouTubers! What we are going to do today is we are going to do a reverse canvas with sublimation. Um, I've got a little trick for you because you can't sublimate on a traditional canvas because the canvas that's in here is um, cotton. So obviously you can't sublimate on cotton. So I've got a trick um, to sublimate on and it's not a coating or a spray that comes off or doesn't coat evenly or any of that stuff. So let me go show you what you need. All right, so I've been using the Wolf Wizard 10 by 10 frame, and then this is a 9 by 12 frame. I have um, the small sawgrass printer that only prints 8.5 by 11 or 8.5 by 14. So these are the frames that I've found I can get to work. Now you do have to take into account, based on whoever makes the frames, they have different widths. So that can kind of make getting your picture centered a little bit tricky. So take that into account when you look at printing and then um, making your actual design because you need this to be big enough to cover the edges of your printer, of your print, um, but not too big that, you know, you end up with this little bitty space in the middle. So this is a 10 by 10 and this is a nine by 12. The nine by 12 is from Hobby Lobby. This guy is from Amazon. I'll leave the links down below. This guy from Hobby Lobby actually has staples on the front, which is a little annoying. And then the key to making this work is actually a very cheap polyester tablecloth. Um, it works really well. I bought it when I first got started with sublimation because it's ch it's cheap, A. But B, it if you want to print something and you don't know how it's going to look or you want to test something out, it's a great tester, let's see what happens kind of fabric. Um, because when you first start, you don't know how any of this is going to look. So it's great before you go and press on anything expensive. So, um, and all of the designs today, this one and the, the wolf and this are, um, were created with a tutorial from Art Art with Flow. I'll leave a link to her YouTube channel. Um, they're done on Procreate. They're, she's an awesome teacher. Um, they're really not hard to do. So um, they're not for sale, but you can draw them using her tutorials. Um, with an iPad and Procreate. So, also, um, these are done on the polyester tablecloth, and this one is too. Um, you can try the printables, but I don't think they look as good. So this is a printable, um, printable heat transfer paper done on cotton. Um, and I just, I didn't mirror it, sorry. I forgot when I did it. I don't think it looks as good as the sublimation does but that's your call to see whatever it is you want to do but it is possible um just know it has a, a rough texture um but it is possible and also keep in mind you're just looking at it on a wall so if you do want to do something printable it is totally doable with any any one of the heat transfer papers especially considering you're not washing it so it's pretty easy to do it that way you will also need something to take the um Something to take the frame off or the canvas off the frame. I've been using um, this is a, a utility knife because I had an exacto knife and I was afraid I was going to take off like a finger pressing too hard. So I have this and the quilting roller that does not get used for quilting. This is some gorilla tape. Um, I tape them back on to the frame. Um, that's just the way I like to do it. You can totally use a nail gun as well. And then spray paint or any kind of paint for your frame. Um, I just used spray paint because it was cheap. This is the cheap, cheapest spray paint from Home Depot. Um, you can also use, I have another one I did, and I used um, my trim paint to match my house. And then you're gonna need some kind of spray adhesive. This is for embroidery. Any of them will work as long as they don't yellow. Um, but this will work. Elmer's has one, but this is what I had in the stash, so I didn't have to buy anything new. So, um, let's go take off our frame, or let's go take our canvas off our frame and get started. All right, so rather than take out all the staples, what I do is use the handy dandy quilting roller. And I sure thought it would be used for quilting at some point in its life. All right, cut it and then cut it this way. I really like to do two, and then pull it off that way. You can take all the staples out if you want to, but I would imagine that would be a little tedious. All 
Alrighty, so that is our canvas. You are going to want to keep this. Um, we'll have to use it again. Um, this is our frame, which actually looks pretty good. I generally like to sand them first. They kind of seem to feel better, but realistically you're shoving it on a wall so it may or may not really get touched that much. So it's up to you. Um, I've never had good luck staining them, but I have fairly good luck painting them. So I'm going to paint this and I'll be back. All right, so we're in Corel Draw. I just wanted to show you um, how to print or how I printed the PNG real quick. So this is my imported PNG. And what I have done is I've sized it to be eight by eight for the 10 by 10 frame that we are making today. And then I try roughly to make the design inside seven by seven so that there's enough border around, kind of enough play to make sure I can see my design and um, we're not left with any white edges. So, um, and then I print to the print manager um, polyester fabric, color still on vivid, and then we are going to mirror it um, because we're going to have to flip it. And then just hit the print button and we are ready to go. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we have our page printed. This is our tablecloth and what I like to do now is just cut out a piece. It does not have to be exact by any means. I also have my, um, I also have my heat press turned on to 400 degrees for 60 seconds. I do like to cut this off just because it's higher, the seam, just because it's higher and I don't want it to affect um, the heat press. So, all right, so while the heat press is warming up, I like to come over here and pre-press it just to get any wrinkles out. Since it's really thin um, polyester, it normally presses pretty well. Now I'm gonna take my um, transfer and tape it on here and get my, um, my butcher paper. All right, so wherever the heat press, this is, so I have my pressing pillow. Um, the pressing pillow helps prevent the burn marks on the fabric. This is my butcher paper below. This is definitely needed just in case any of my transfer goes through the fabric because the fabric's really thin. Um, this is our tablecloth and this is our transfer. And this is some butcher paper on top, which realistically is probably not needed, but it makes me feel better. So we're gonna press this at 400 degrees for 60 seconds. All righty. Off my paper. And there is our design. Now we're gonna go put it in our canvas. All right, so what I'd like to do now is, this is our canvas that we took off originally. So what um, we are going to do now is glue our little tablecloth to it. This tablecloth is really thin, so it doesn't have enough like strength to kind of stand up in the frame and hold its hold a shape. So I've been using the spray basting spray. It's in my craft stash. It's for embroidery technically. Um, but I would imagine any spray adhesive kind of stuff would work. So then I just like to sunk it down and smooth it out. Um, preferably somewhere in the middle. We're going to end up cutting off a lot of this. Okay. So then out comes a quilting roller. We're on the self-healing mat again. So to start, I just cut... So this is an inch. Basically, it's just kind of to cut off some of the extra. All right, so we got to cut down. The next thing I like to do is just cut off a little bit of this um, of this tablecloth. So that way when we stick it to the frame, it's, um, we're going to stick and it'll stick both the tablecloth and this canvas just to make sure it's a little more secure in the frame. It's probably a little bit overkill, but I don't really want to have to take it down and fix it if it comes loose. So a little bit of hacking. All right. So this is my frame all spray painted up. And then to attach our, our sublimation piece, I use this as Gorilla Mounting Tape. Um, it's fairly sticky, as you'll see in a minute. And see, um, I apply it to the back of the frame. 
So what I do is I measure it and then I cut it in the middle. Cause it's not the most expensive stuff in the world, but it's not the cheapest either. So I just cut it up the middle with some scissors. Eat sticky. And then just apply it to the back of the frame. Alrighty, so once I get that done, then you can peel off the second layer of the tape. So exposing the other side, sticky side. All right, so I exposed the uh, sticky here. And you only, unfortunately, kind of get one shot at this. Um, just because it is really sticky tape. So, line it all up. And then stick. And there we go. So that is our finished uh, lion, and this is our original um, uh, wolf head. So I hope you liked our little tutorial. It's pretty easy to do and kind of cool. Um, I thought it'd also be really cool. They have all those watercolor um, initials that are really pretty. And this is a relatively cheap project to do um, for like a baby's room or like a hallway kind of thing. And then uh, inexpensive enough, you can throw it away when you want to redecorate. So. Anywho, I hope you like. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments, and I will do my best to answer them. Thank you so much for watching.